Welcome everybody, my name is Diego and I'm going to do this C++ quiz. So if you are going to, to play for the amazing prizes, please start joining Kahoot. So go to kahoot.it, just on the web, on the browser of your mobile. It's not, you don't need to install the app, just go to the, with the browser to this, to this address and enter your, this, this pin number and then your name. I expect you to be creative. I want to see names like, I don't know, you invent something. Develop. I, I wouldn't imagine who, who could be develop. <laughs> NPM rocks. That troll can can get out of the room, please. <laughs> Vector bull is, is the the one from Reddit. Vector bool in Reddit and Slack? Not the same one? C minus minus? No, doesn't matter. Okay, I, I'll, I'll get back to this. So I'm going to, to uh, explain the rules. So first, this app, it will be very easy. It will be a question on the screen. It's a piece of code, okay? And there are four options, and you have to press the correct one. Okay, just so you get only the, the four colors in your screen. If someone is blind color, uh, watch the shape, please. And the actual output will be here. The text that is the output of running the program will be in my screen, in the main screen. So the rules. This is the output of this code running on my machine. It's a MacBook Pro running Windows, thank you. And it will compile with Visual Studio 15, update 3, with CMake in the release configuration, 64 bits, uh, using the latest, C++. Uh, I, the headers is the only part that I have stripped from the, from the code, but otherwise the code is complete. It always compile, it always run, it doesn't check faults or whatever, and I want the output of this code. Might be undefined behavior, might be something specified, something platform dependent. I don't care. It runs on my machine. So for once in a life, I can say this, you are not my managers, it runs on my machine, so now it's your time to figure out um, which is the output of, of this. So the rule, other rule is, as you can imagine, is not a job interview. The code doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be real. It doesn't have to be good practices. I try to describe some good practices, but it ha doesn't have to be good practice. The time, you, as always, it's deadlines, you won't have enough time. It's your uh, task to figure out how to, how to guess the solution in the time you have. So actually you have 60 seconds for each question. So I will first put the code here in my slide. It will be there for a few seconds while I explain a couple of things. And then I will switch to Kahoot and in Kahoot, you will have 60 seconds. So if the time is going out, just answer something. It's a 20, 25% of chance to, uh, that, that you guess it. So the prizes for the winners. Of course, this is nothing. For the second and the third, we have these Rubik's Cubes. They are challenging ones because they have orientation, not only color. But we are C++ developers. We love challenges. And for the winners, we have this Raspberry Pool thing Raspberry Pi with the case and the cables and everything. So I love this, these things. So this is for the winner. And of course, the, the prize, the real prize is the fame of the, of, uh, and the glory of being the best C++ developer in a C++ conference. So are you ready? Someone else that was, is, is joining in the last minute? So please go to kahoot.it. Use that number, that pin number. I'm 39, 
before he, so, someone is still joining? Everybody's in? Yeah, please enter with your browser in kahoot.it. Uh, no, not working. You're in. Put something in your connection. Just steal your colleague mobile phone if you want to win. <laughs> okay, so let's start. So we are C++ and we are part of such modern C++. There are things like uh, unique pointers, shared pointers. Uh, the idea is that we, uh, this is modern and this is cool, but I have a new theory. Those are fake news. So we prefer to use raw pointers and news are beautiful. So do you agree with me that, that this would be much cleaner code than using shared pointers or unique pointers, right? So now, with this beautiful code here, it is your task to say what will be the output if I run this code sorry, on my machine. Okay, ready? And what is happening? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, maybe it's just slow. I use my mobile. So come on, 60 seconds. By the way, it counts the fastest you answer, the more points you get. So if you all get the, the right answer, the one who is winning is the fastest one. But if you are wrong, it takes many points away. So you better be sure that it is the right answer, but try to be fast. Come on, 20 seconds to go, only half of the answers. Come on, nine, eight. Still need 10 answers. Come on, press any, press any button. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so only nine? Only nine? That was the easy. That was the first one. What's the easy? Are, are we in, in Italian C sharp or something? So the key here is the, in the constructor, we are outputting the input. The news string there is, is not used at all. And then the operator, the stream operator, is outputting the dash news, the underscore news. So the output is actually fake, fake. OK, so you agree with me that this code is much more readable because for me, readability is very important. So I love this thing. You have to code like if your code is, is, uh, was going to be maintained by a psychopath, psychopath, that it happens from, from time to time. <laughs> so you have to be careful. So one of the things that I really love about Python is that it's very readable. It's very readable. And with C++11, C++14, we have been improving. We have been improving a lot towards readability, and you can get piece of codes that are basically the same in Python and C++, but I think that we can do even better. Oh, sorry. And this is perfectly valid C++ code. It compiles in my machine, it runs, and now it is your task to tell me the output of this C++ Python code. Are you ready?
I promise it builds, and it runs. <laughs> and if you know some Python, just evaluate as Python. Five seconds to go. And you did great. You did great in this one. So it's actually the Italian Python conference, it seems. <laughs> so and this and this troll is Russ is better is the, the winning so far. Okay. And Cvelop is doing great, by the way. <laughs> Sorry about that. So uh, the keys here, uh, besides the evil macros, the first one is just you can do that. It's one of the reasons we are trying to get rid of them. And the second one is the interesting one because you cannot use a number as a defined. It, it, it's a syntax error if you try to use there a number. So the first is actually an L. It's a letter. It's the way it can it can actually build and and work. Okay, so we are. Our code right now with the news, with the Python style, is getting much, much better. So there are many C++ model features that uh, helped in readability. In one of the committees, one of the conferences, they were asking the, the, the committee what was their favorite C++ 17 feature. And most of them agreed it was a structured bindings. Okay? And I agree, I love structured bindings. And the next exercise will have structured bindings. But the, Great thing here is, OK, how can we convey more readability? And especially, we are humans. We are people. We communicate with our friends, developers, our managers. So we are using one resource all the time to communicate with our colleagues, with our friends, with our family. And we are not using it enough in coding. This is perfectly C++ code. It builds. It runs. And it transmits all your emotions. You can do a pull request to your manager with this, and they will love it, I promise. So now, as I say, this is structure bindings there. As I guess the structure binding is not going to be the difficult part. I don't know why. So now it is your turn to tell me what is the output of this very readable code. I'm going to switch to Kahoot. Come on, 10 seconds. Do your guesses. Five. <laughs> and you did a great job again. The winners is still Russ is better. Do they want to show up or do they want to wait until the end? Sivelov second. Good job. Esterman, third. So there is nothing special there besides the evaluation with all the emojis, <laughs> of course. So we are improving readability a bunch. And now, of course, our scalers will say, hey, I know a trick to improve readability even further. It's, it's Haskell. It's go, going functional. So the good thing about C++, modern C++, is that we are getting some new vocabulary types. We have optionals. We have variants. We have any that help us to improve our functional code. So what will be the output of this, this functional code?
and I'm going to switch. The HTTP literals is a new, it's some legacy, it was there for no reason. Uh, this was fine. One answer more. There's like just a couple of people missing. Five seconds. Uh, and someone <laughs> missed the right answer. Why? Let's see what happened. Oh, Peter, <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> and Russell Petris is still very consistent. See, minus, minus. Took the lead. The key here is the, this is not evaluating the value. An optional Boolean, Boolean check is checking if it has a value, not if it is zero. And in this case, it's, it clearly has a value that is zero, it has a value, then it runs one, two times. So that was the right, sorry, I, I, <laughs> I cut you. So even if we improve readability so much, <laughs> we will need to use tools. Unless, of course, you are Chuck Norris. In this case, you can stare your code until it confesses. Um, which, by the way, I have a very powerful tool. You know, you love IDs. Uh, my favorite debugging tool is the print. Who is with me? Who is using prints for debugging? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and the other step, if you have to debug threaded code, if you have to debug threads, what is your favorite tool? Uh, the second one. Sleeps. <laughs> you need the sleeps at some point to, to play with your thread, to force the race condition, whatever. So what is the output of this beautiful thread code? And now you will start, hey, this is not deterministic, Diego. I don't care. It runs in my machine. I can run it several times, 10 times in a row, and the result is always the same. This is everything I can say. Okay? It's not deterministic. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. I don't care. So what will be the output of this code? It's a bit small, sorry. <laughs> it is threaded code, it cannot be deterministic. <laughs> yeah. Come on, 20 seconds. <laughs> you, you can blame Kahoot. Say it's not working, the con internet connection was wrong or something. <laughs> no, it's impossible. Once you press, you're done. So let's see what happened. Yeah, it's zero, zero, zero is the right answer. So Russ is better still. Sorry, Peter, you are out of the, of the top. So of course, the key here is the capture is by value. And the mutable, the mutable there is the only way you can actually change, try to change, and the, and the compiler won't error. Otherwise, the, this will error because you are trying to change something capital by value. But still, the value outside of the lambdas is always zero. The initial value is zero, and outside of the, uh, you print the post increment, so 
print 0 is 0, print 0 is 0, no matter if you post incremented or change to 42, outside of the lambdas, it's always 0. So 2017, uh, because of people not using my advice, it was a very bad year for security. We got the spectra and meltdown and those things. So you cannot trust other people's security. So for this, this exercise, of course, I roll uh, up my, my own security. So it is your job to decipher, to know what is the password that I'm using in my code. Uh, I, won't, I won't confess. So you cannot use this trick with, with me. And you have to figure out the password from the code. It's a very challenging crypto algorithm. You will never, you will never guess what is the output. Check the reverse, too. Yeah, beware of the reverse that is after encoding. So what is the output of this, this code? No, I love to go local. Come on, 15 seconds. Yeah, you got it pretty well. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? So Raspberry is doing and CVLOP also go to the top again. Hey, I can I can ban it. <laughs> I probably use my superpowers. So, uh, from the people that was in meeting C++, uh, probably the the right answer in meeting C++ was was Mirza Kani. If you don't know her, she she was the first woman to win the Fields Medal, and it's, I think it's an inspiration. So this code is fun, so like solving a puzzle or connecting the dots in a detective case is something I really identify with. So I think it's a very good example is someone to see died last year, by the way, I can. So. And of course, the correct answer in this case was Mark Arena, is your, your leader, someone I think we should be really grateful that you have someone like Mark organizing all this, all this stuff. So the easy way to solve this one is okay, so the encoding is just the next letter, just wrapping up. The, so the set is an A, and you only need to check the first two letters that they will translate to a, an A and an N. Is the only solution was Mark Arena is the, the only one not ending in N E. So it was a very bad year for security, but a very good one for artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence, you know, is for investors. We developers, we call it machine learning. And, but at the end, I'm, I don't trust, I mean, I'm not a believer in artificial intelligence or machine learning because I know that inside our algorithms are there and that cannot be very smart. I, so, uh, all these multiplications, neurons, neural networks, they are just multiplications. This is a reduced part of it. So what would be the output of running this extreme artificial intelligence code?
Five seconds to go. Come on, press something. And Russ is better still leading. So the answer, this is basically the average. You are multiplying in the inner product of the, the vector, multiplied by one divided by n. That's the average of the vector I was surprised. Okay, so if we are doing artificial intelligence, those computations are very heavy, we probably want to be fast, and we want performance. And concept per is one of the mechanisms that has evolved in compile time. It allows us to be performant many times. So there is a very interesting talk by Bindian and Jason Turner. It's called Concept Spread for All the Things. It's very interesting, I recommend it, it's online. So I love this talk. So this is what I'm doing. I'm following their advice. I'm, I'm, I'm doing Concept Spread all the way down. So now is your time to figure out what is the output of this code here that is Concept Spread code. And I guess that they are inviting me for, for, for the next, it compiles and it runs. Yeah. So I know Jason and, and, and Ben, they are inviting me for the next talk. We will be three in concept spec, all the things. Microsoft. <laughs> I was surprised. I, 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 had a, I was simplifying this. It was larger. I removed a type and it built. There was a type there. I remove it and it built. <laughs> Come on, few answers left. 50 seconds. Probably we should show this to someone in the committee. <laughs> yeah, and does it, does it, you figure out correctly? Russ is better still lead, vector of bull, Albertino. So uh, it seems we are getting the spaceship operator that is pretty cool, I think. Uh, and. I love how operators, they look like in code. They made, I prefer much an operator than a dot add or add a dot multiply that we have in other languages. Because operators, they allow us to do these beautiful things. This perfectly readable space if, this is a StarCraft, not a space if, it's just a StarCraft code. So what is the output of this? So readable and beautiful. I don't think the other language can do that. Brain, brain, brain fuck, maybe. <laughs> In BrainFact, probably you can do that. Come on, I know you are suffering. It's the last one. It's only one more to go. So what is the output of this code? I also suggest including this in a pull request to a manager or something. Five seconds, four, three, two, good. Oh, Rust, what happened, Rust? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so here the key is that the, the only one changing the value, the actual value, is the, the unary operators. The binary operator is not changing the value. So there are actually only four times that the value gets decremented, each of the corners, and the rest of these operators, they are not changing the final value. So it's minus 
zero, four times. Easy. So I know this is a bit insane quiz. Actually, this is a very simplified version of the quiz that I'm doing for two years now in Meeting C++ in Berlin. I will repeat it this year. And I go a bit insane because there are people there that they can score a perfect 100 points having to write down the answers, not having to choose between some answers, just writing down the answers. So I did something very, very difficult to, to guess as the last exercise, I, they managed to solve it. I don't know if it's still that. So I'm becoming sort of a bit creative in the last one. So what would be the output of this code here? And I'm switching to Kahoot very quickly. <laughs> it, it's frozen? Yeah. Yeah, probably too much load of, on the Kahoot. Come on. Five seconds. It's dead. And yeah, barbarian. It is getting the source code of the HTML page of Italian C++. And this is called, now you know for a reason, this is the barbarian quiz. So the answer was barbarian. Let's see what happened. So vector of bool, C minus minus and super pipo. So please, super pipo, come here. Who is super pipo? <laughs> Big round of applause. So this for you, C congratulations. Then C minus minus, who is C minus minus? Big applause. You did great. And finally, the champion, the best C++ crazy developer of the room, Vector Bull. Who is Vector Bull? You are? Yay, congratulations. <laughs> so, great, great job. You did a great job. Thank you. I think I would have actually missed the last one, the network failure. Uh, and even, even though you, you won, so. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed. We're a bit late, so I'm going to try to, to hurry up a little bit. Let's go to something, ah, yeah, for sure. Uh, go to the booth to talk to us to, for get a teaser or something. Let's go to something more serious. I'm going to talk about Conan, Conan Package Manager, which is open source, MIT license, totally free. It can match any build system, any. We have good integration, but it can, it, it can manage any, even your own proprietary build system. And it can handle, handle build, build, building from sources and also using binaries. It is backed by an amazing community of users. We are to get 2,000 stars in GitHub. The Slack channel in CPP Lang has 300, almost 400 followers, very friendly and helpful. And uh, we are using production by hundreds of companies. Some of them, they are in our web page, the ones that allows to put the, the logos there, but there are many of them. So Conan is decentralized. So you have the client side and you have the server side. In the server side, there is the storage of the packages and the binaries. And the client side is the developer side or the continuous integration side of the, of the build servers. The model is that for every library, let's say, that you want to build, you have a package recipe. And with that recipe, you can have any number of binaries. One different binary for every configuration. 
So if you are in Windows Visual Studio 14, you will get a different binary than if you are in Linux and GCC 6. And if you are in Linux, GCC 4, whatever, your binary is also different. And they will be managed by, by Conan. And when you are using, using them, you do Conan install and you get the right binary for your configuration. You don't need to get to fetch all of them. The way we identify binaries is by the, by the hash of the configuration. So the configuration of a, of a package is basically the settings, the architecture, the build type, compiler, and many other things. They are hash, and that's the identifier of the binary. So now I'm trying to do everything live, so you get a, good, a real, real grasp of how Conan looks. So the first thing I'm going to try is I'm going to use some existing packages. Okay, so here I have an example, this code. Okay, it's a very simple application, a main application, but here I'm going to use two libraries. I'm going to use Poco li uh, library to compute the MD5 of a string, and I'm going to use Boost to compute the regex of an email. Okay, that's my application. So I need to link with Boost and Poco. So for that, I will define a Conan file. An icon file in the, the simplest form looks like this. It's a, it's a text file. I define my, my requirements with the versions I want. And then I specify my build system. Because I told you you can integrate it with any build system. In this case, I'm like, hey, Conan, please generate for me a CMake file that I can use in my build. This is what I'm telling in the generators part. So if I want to build my application, I'm going to do a Conan install, does that? Okay, it was a bit fast because actually I, I pre-downloaded the things to my, my computer, I didn't want to. Otherwise, it will be about one minute, two minutes because I'm getting the pre-built binaries. I'm not, I don't have to build from sources uh, all the time. So if I remove and I clean my machine, it will be like about two minutes to get all of it. And as you can see, I got several different packages, why? because I can print the dependency graph. And it happens that, okay, I, I'm using Boost and Poco, but Poco has a transitive dependency to OpenSSL, and Boost has a, a transitive dependency to setlib and to bzip2, okay? Great, so, and the other thing that Conan generated for me is this file. So it generated this CMake file for me that it has all the variables I need, include paths, library names, uh, definitions. So as I'm using Boost as static, I have the defines there. So to build this application, I don't need to figure out anything. All the information is already there. So my build system will, there are ways to avoid this, but this is the more, the more clear. You just include the file, and you use the file. And the rest of the, of the build script here is a standard CMake. I'm saying, hey, build my application and links with the Conan libraries. With this, I can, I'm done with my uh, a standard CMake build system. In this case, I'm using Visual Studio 15. So this is a standard CMake build procedure. With this, I would get my Visual Studio solution. I could open Visual Studio and I start working my Visual Studio solution. But in this case, I'm going to just build in command line. It's more convenient for the demo. So I'm calling Visual Studio from CMake. But I told you, you can just open Visual Studio and build the thing. Okay, and so it built my application and it's running. And it is actually using Poco, OpenSSL, Zlib, bzip 2 all at once in Windows. This is a Windows machine. And for me, that I am a C++ developer, I'm working in Windows most of my time, this is amazing. Having be, been able to, to do this is, is incredible for me. So, okay, so we were using here pre-built packages. The packages were there. They are actually they are in a public repository in Bintray. It's called Conan Center. You can, you can get packages from there. But the question is, okay, so now I want to package my own library. How can I do that? So we are a bit short of time, so I'm going to speed it a little bit. So in this case, I have here a library 
that is a hello world library, very simple. It's a hello function that outputs hello world release, hello world debug with a header and CMake file. Nothing very special. So what do I need to package uh, an existing library? Uh, the way is to specify a Conan file. It's a recipe. We'll call it a package recipe. And in the package recipe, we will specify a few things. For example, this. This is the configuration. It means, A, if you change the operating system, you will have a different binary. If you change the compiler, you will have a different binary. So all the things that affect your binary, you can model them. And you can customize this. You can add here any other configuration you want. Then we specify, and of course, you have the option to be static or dynamic, because the final binary will also be different. So this is configurable. And then we have here three methods. The first one is the, is the build. In build, we have good integration with build system. CMake, for example, this will do it for you. But if you want to call your build system, just call the build as you will do it manually in the, the only thing that you will automate. So this, in the build method, you will be calling your build system to build your library. In the package method, you will be extracting the artifacts, typically the headers, the libraries, uh, binaries, executables, and data. And finally, we have the package information method. This is the information for your consumers. Here you are telling, A, hey, if you want to link with this package, you have to link with the hello library. So then the consumer doesn't have to figure out what to, what to put there. Here you can defi define definitions, uh, custom include directories, custom library paths, whatever you want to specify that is special to put your package, you can put it there. This is what translates to the Conan Bill Info.cmake file that I show you. That, that information there comes from this function here. So the process to create a package for, with this is Conan create is the command Conan create. So the Conan create will be calling the build method. It will be building the, the source code and creating the libraries. Then it will be calling the package method. And here we have the package. So if we check Conan search that is spec my local machine, my local cache, I can see that I have this, this package. And for this package, if I inspect the package, I see that I have just one binary. I have a binary for Visual Studio 15 that is my default configuration. So if I want to change that, okay, now I want to create packages for my team for 32-bit architecture because we are deploying for 32-bit machines. So all I need to do is go and create, and then I will specify the architecture. In this case, it will be x86. And this will be generating the same package, but for 32 bits. So the same it will be building. It will be creating the package. So if I search, now I will have two packages, one for 32 bits and the one for 64 bits. OK, so all of this is with, with my default profile, my default configuration. But what if I define a custom profile Custom profile is this file here. So here I'm specifying that my operating system will be Linux, but my build system is Windows. My compiler is GCC 4.6, and the architecture is an ARM architecture. This is my Raspberry Pi. And if I specify here the environment and my cross compilers, then I can use this profile, Conan create user testing profile will be the file that I show you. And then I will be cross-building from Windows to the Raspberry Pi Linux. Here you can see the Windows to Linux. It is using my cross-compiler. So here you see cross-build from Windows to Linux. And of course, it is packaging now the libhello.a. So now I have three binaries for the hello package in my machine. I have the binaries for Visual Studio, 64 and 32 bits architecture. I have the binary for my Raspberry Pi. OK, this is great. They are building my machine. They are local to my machine. Now, as the last step, I want to share them with my team. So that what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload them to Artifactory. So Artifactory is this uh, repository here. Let me. Yeah, 
is this repository here? Okay, it's very easy to set up. This is also free. This is an Active Factory CE Community Edition. It's a free tool, and you can use it professionally for commercial purposes. It's an in-house server you can host in your company. So your packages are private. So I'm going to upload to Artifactory. Okay, let's upload hello uh, with all the binaries to my remote that is called Artifactory. Because Conan is decentralized. You can get packages from one remote, push them to a different remote. It's the same. It's Git-like. You can push and pull from different remotes very easily. So I'm going to upload to Artifactory. So if I check my Artifactory, refresh, and here I've got my package for my three different configurations. Great. Now the package and the binaries are in Artifactory. My team, my company can reuse them very easily without needing to rebuild from sources. So if we get back to the initial project, we introduce here the include hello.h. We call the function here, hello. We specify in our requirements that we are depending on the hello package. Now I can build my application fairly easy. Okay, CD build. By the way, I'm going to actually I'm going to remove my local cached package. So when I do the Conan install, you can see now now, now my dependencies it in, includes the hello package and the hello package was downloaded from Artifactory. So if I manage to build my thing, we, it's going to be CMake. And here we are. We created the package, we uploaded to Artifactory, we added the requirements to our code, we stole it, we, get, we got the binary, the right binary. I built three of them for architectures and Raspberry Pi. I did the code install, it only stole the right one, and it built. So, yeah, I'm about to finish. So, yeah, this is the demo. Thanks very much for coming. Uh, we are hiring in Madrid. If someone is interested to move into Madrid, we are hiring. You will be very welcome. And of course, we are in the booth. Come there for your uh, T-shirt. And if you want to get more, uh, to know something more about Conan, we'd love to, to talk to you. So thanks very much. Can I make a question? Uh, yeah, question. So, 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 sorry, because we were sort of time. I will, yeah, please, go ahead. Are the packages signed? Uh, the Is packages? it possible to sign the packages before uploading uh, from the developer who... Uh, no, no there is no, nothing automatic. We have a manifest verification. So you can actually, when you install or when you create them, you can capture the manifest of the package. So when you restore them, you can actually uh, compare the manifest from the upstream one to your local manifest, so you are sure that no one tampered. So it's not signing the packages, uh, but at least you can manifest verify them to make sure that they were not changed. And the manifest contains the source code uh, as uh, in the repository? It, it, it depends. It depends on how to, to you create the packages, because it's possible to uh, package pre-built binaries. So if you have a vendor closed source package, you can also create a package for that. Okay. So it depends how you package things. Okay, thank yeah, you. We can talk later if you, if you okay, want. Okay. So, so you in, in the break, will we be yeah. there and we can, we can talk? Thank you.